And welcome everybody, you're listening to the Bleeding Baby Blue Podcast, Alex Skybridge Project back again. So a couple things for this weekend, today's plans, today's plans, we are going matchup by matchup for every week in the 2020 season and determining who is better at what position. So quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, O-line, special teams, all you name it. So we're going week by week with that. Remember tomorrow I am doing my Madden simulation stream, it is the Giants at the Rams week four. Then on Thursday, you got a double whammy. We got the interview with Curtis Grant, former Giants linebacker from 2017. Get to ask him questions. Make sure to DM or comment what questions you would like me to ask him. And also later that night at around 8.20 p.m. is the Madden live stream, the Bengals franchise. This one is week five in Dallas, 8.20 p.m. And I'm also going to read out my schedule to you guys right now that is... I have redone because Madden 21 is coming out August 25th, so I want everything done in this franchise in space just in case I go to the playoffs because I'm 4-0. I just want everything done before that date and it gives space for potential playoffs, so I reorganized my schedule a little bit with help from people behind the scenes. Now, I will come up with a graphic for this for people who don't listen to the podcast or haven't listened to the podcast and then tune into the Instagram or Twitter account, so I will post a graphic for them there, but here it is. And also note that these schedules are subject to change just in case I have any plans or might want to do a game earlier or later. So here it goes. Obviously, this Thursday, 8.20 p.m. is the Dallas game scheduled inside the game as Thursday Night Football. The rest of these, I'm not going to read with times, but I'm going to read them with the dates. Week 6 at Buffalo is July 5th. Week 8 versus the Eagles is Sunday, July 7th. Week 9 at Baltimore is Wednesday, July 9th. Week 10 versus Jacksonville is Sunday, July 12th. Week 11 versus the Cleveland Browns is Wednesday, July 15th. Week 12 versus the Colts is Sunday, July 19th. Week 13 at Pittsburgh is Wednesday, July 22nd. Week 14 at Houston is Sunday, July 26th. Week 15 at versus the Giants is Wednesday, July 29th. Week 16 at Tennessee, Sunday, August 2nd. Week 17 versus Denver, the last game of the regular season, is Wednesday, August 5th. And then if I go to the wild card, it's Sunday, August 9th. If I go to the divisional matchups, that's Wednesday, August 12th. AFC Championship, if I go to that, Sunday, August 16th. The Pro Bowl, if I am the head coach, is Sunday, August 19th. And the Super Bowl is Wednesday, August 23rd, two days before the release of Madden 21. Just to put a reminder out there, we do have a Discord server. Feel free to join it, ask us questions, come up with content for the future, and also just talk Giants and NFL in there. We would love to talk with some of the fans. The link is on our Instagram and Twitter pages at Linktree. It's the link in our bio. It contains the podcast links on Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, Google Play, Apple Podcast. Also goes to my personal Instagram. I'm pretty sure it has my personal Twitter on it. I also have an account for PSCP TV broadcast just in case I want to go live on something and I'm commentating, which is a possible thought during the season. To bear that in mind, I'm pretty sure. Now, this is just just in case, but I could be going live for the first game of the season, which is against Pittsburgh on Monday night. I could be commentating with my friend Sean and my brother Luca on that one since it's the first game of the Giants season for this podcast, and Sean is a Steelers fan, so he would love to watch that with me, and then we get to both see what our teams look like in the first game of the season, especially on primetime at 7.15 p.m., but that's something also to look forward to. It could change. I'll let you guys know on that, but we have a long way to go before the regular season. The preseason is probably going to get cut down to two games, so I'll update you guys on that one as many other NFL writers and reporters will. Before I get to my next topic, today is the final day, and I'll be posting it after I post this podcast, is the final day of the top five New York Giants in 2020 or coming into 2020 series Daniel Jones Saquon Barkley is the final matchup so I'll put up a poll for that that's going to last either one or two days so be prepared to vote on that on Instagram and Twitter if you guys haven't already also follow my Giants current account I 
used to run a lot of Giants content on there. I'm really not much on there anymore other than posting for the story. And I also do a lot of promotions for my podcast on that account. So be sure to follow it. It has more followers than the Bleeding Big Blue Podcast Instagram account. But still follow those two pages. And also, I'm pretty sure my personal Instagram should be linked in the link tree. So without further ado, let's get to week one. So this is Pittsburgh versus New York Giants. Week one, this is obviously going to be on Monday Night Football. Quarterback position, I have the Steelers having the better battle on that one, and they win that one. Because Ben Roethlisberger is a experienced veteran, and he does have some key backups, but I'm mostly looking at the starting position. Roethlisberger is coming off a season-ending injury, but I don't think Daniel Jones is there yet to beat Ben Roethlisberger, in my predictions for the season at least, and I just don't think that Jones is developed yet that much to be better than Ben Roethlisberger. Running back position, some key names to add there for the Giants, Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis, and then the running back position for the Steelers, James Conner, Jalen Samuels, Benny Snell, and the fourth round draft pick out of Maryland, Anthony McFarland. Personally, the New York Giants win this one. Depth is a great thing for the Steelers. They do have a lot of depth. They drafted Benny Snell last year and drafted Anthony McFarland this year, but you got to look at the prosperity of it and the talent level I think Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis outdo the talent that the Pittsburgh Steelers have and I think Saquon Barkley is better than all the running backs on that roster Connor's a good running back but he has his injury moments and I just don't think he's as good as Barkley Deion Lewis it could be debated but right now he's the number two and he's the backup running back so he could get some good carries but Right now, we're just focusing on Saquon Barkley, and I think the Giants do have a better running back core than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wide receiver is very debatable. You have a great number one in Juju Smith-Schuster, or if you're a Steelers fan or another fan, you could debate whether he still is a number one. James Washington behind him, Deontay Johnson as well, and Chase Claypool. Now, when I'm doing this with every position ranking and every team, I'm not going to really consider any rookies because you can't really base it off of college and say what they're going to be. Now, I know I've done that in the past with Andrew Thomas and a couple others when seeing what they could be in the defense or the offense or whatever, but just this one, I'm going to focus much on the starters. I could consider the rookies, but if it's a late round pick or maybe a developmental pick, I might or might not consider them. So... Obviously, Chase Claypool, they drafted in the second round. The Giants, they still have Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton. Slayton, obviously, big production last year. Tate slowly coming out of his prime, but he can still produce. So, I think that Pittsburgh still has it here with wide receivers, but not by much. Once the Giants get a number one receiver, maybe in next year's draft or somewhere, they could probably compete in that sort of position because Juju Smith-Schuster... As much as people don't consider him as a number one receiver, he's their number one right now. And I feel like he's a better number one than Tate is. Listen, Tate has a lot of experience as a veteran, but he ain't a long-term option, especially at wide receiver one. Now, it's very competitive once it gets back into the wide receiver twos, the wide receiver threes, because I think Sterling Shepard is better than James Washington and Slayton's better than Deontay Johnson. So that's my thoughts on that. But I think the wide receiver one definitely is the core position. That's why the Steelers beat out the Giants when it comes to wide receivers. That's my opinion. When it comes to tight ends, it comes to if you're proven or not, basically, but I pick the Steelers. Evan Ingram, he gets injured a lot, but can't produce when he's on the field, and he gets involved. Caden Smith, he was a good pop-out last year, showed some real promise, but we don't know what he's going to be in a full-time session, probably is the number two tight end. But when you take a look at Pittsburgh, Vince McDonald's been there for a couple of years now, ever since from coming over from the San Francisco 49ers. He's had a lot of production, especially with Jesse James when he was there, and now Eric Ebron's there from the Colts. So that's going to be real interesting, and I'm really waiting to see that. But I just think that the tight ends of the Steelers are better than the tight ends of the Giants at this point. The offensive line is almost a no-brainer once the Giants try to have a good offensive line, and they drafted three picks on their offensive line with Lemieux, Thomas, and Matt Peart. But once that all comes together, then they could probably compete when it comes to the Steelers' offensive line because they got a lot of key pieces, even though they lost 
Ramon Foster in the offseason. They still have Alejandro Villanueva and David DeCastro and also Marcus Pouncey on the offensive line. Those are some key pieces and key veterans. For the Giants, you could consider Thomas. He's probably going to be starting right tackle, left tackle, as I mentioned before. I'm not going to be hugely considering rookies into this, but I will take some thought into it. But the only solid lineman that could probably compare to the Pittsburgh Steelers right now is Kevin Zeitler. He's underrated, but he's a solid guard. Soldier can't compare because he had a down season last year, hasn't lived up to his contract, and Will Hernandez is still developing. We don't know who's going to play a right tackle yet. It could be Thomas or he could be playing the left side. Possibility. And then you could be having Nick Gates or Spencer Pulley at center. But definitely, if you even look from far away, the offensive line of the Steelers is better than the offensive line of the Giants. And the offensive line of the Giants is going to have a little trouble facing the Steelers' defensive line, which is our next position. And the Steelers beat the Giants in this position in my ranking because they have guys who can push the pocket in the inside. Schemes may be different, but I know Leonard Williams is underrated. I know that. But I just think that the core interior needs to develop a little more and create more pressure. Steelers have Cam Hayward and Stephon Tewitt who could get to the quarterback. Tomlinson, Lawrence, and Williams can get to the quarterback as well. But I think that Hayward and Tewitt are better at that. One thing that people don't bring up is what is the difference between the Giants defensive line and the defensive line of the 49ers? Well, put it simple. They do have good defensive tackles and good defensive linemen. Yes, they're in a different scheme, but they're also under 300 pounds. And those are speedy guys that can get to the quarterback. Tuitt and Hayward are also those guys. Hayward is more of a fatter defensive lineman, but he can still get to the quarterback. So uh, Tomlinson, Lawrence, those guys are over 300 pounds, but that also goes to their speed game and getting the quarterback. They can still stop the run, though. And that is Gettleman's obsession with stopping the run is the 300-pound defensive tackles while he drafted Dexter Lawrence and B.J. Hill. So going on to the linebacking core, it's pretty easy if you make the point. Steelers have a better linebacking core. Devin Bush, T.J. Watt, Bud Dupree, Vince Williams, all there, all playmakers on the defense, especially Watt and Devin Bush, the rookie from last year. And then for the Giants, you got Blake Martinez, the only proven guy so far. Golden, he's a system fit. He hasn't come back yet officially. Nobody has been knocking on his door to sign with another team. But as far as that goes, Martinez is the only proven player. Ziminis could be, but again, we'll see about that and what he is in his second year. Going back to the secondary, most specifically the cornerback spot, and I have the Giants losing this one again. Joe Hayden could be coming out of his prime. You could debate it. But I would definitely pick him and Steven Nelson over the Giants secondary at the cornerback position. Now, James Bradbury, he's a proven good corner. He's solid. He was solid for the Panthers for many years. But behind him, you have a lot of unproven talent because Ballantyne, Baker, and Beal, and most of those guys struggled last year, and you don't really know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, some plays showed promise. But, again, you don't know what's going to happen because they struggled a huge lot last year. And then you're coming into a new scheme with Patrick Graham. So that's going to be interesting. But right now I have the cornerback position going to the Steelers. Safety position, it's tough in a way, and it's really not. Minka Fitzpatrick, as soon as he came over for the Miami Dolphins last year, huge playmaker for the Steelers, and he made a Pro Bowl. Now you have the Giants side, which is Jabril Peppers, Xavier McKinney, and Julian Love. Those are the guys for the safety position for the Giants. Now, Peppers is proven. He can be a Swiss Army knife. So can Love. Now, both of those guys did not play the full season last year. Peppers left after the Bears game with a season-ending injury. And then that's when Julian Love stepped in for the rest of the season. But Love, the first part of the season, they didn't feel he was ready. So he was mostly on special teams duties. But those are more proven than Xavier McKinney. Everyone's talking about Oh, Xavier McKinney, you know, underrated for Defensive Player of the Year. As I said this, and I said this before, even at the beginning of the podcast, for rookies, I'm not going to consider them too much because I don't know what role they will play, mostly when it comes to different teams, including the Giants. And I'm one of those laid-back, sit-and-wait-and-watch guys. I'm not going to make this crazy prediction that the Giants are going to lose a lot or win a lot. I just like to see what's going to happen. Then I'll make a prediction going from there. But for right now... I think Minka's talent overrides the safety position for the Giants. 
but definitely something to look forward to for the future for the Giants. Now, special teams. I'm not going to consider Gunners a lot, but it's definitely something I will cut into play. For special teams, I will basically go with the Steelers on this one. Dixon, he's a good punter and was a Pro Bowl replacement last year. But even though Boswell had a down season in 2018 when Rosas had an up season, those two swapped and Boswell had a good season this year. And also Ryan Switzer is a key returner for them on special teams. So that's always something to look forward to. And the Giants don't really have that key returner yet. I mean, Jibril Peppers can also return kicks and punts, which he's shown to do. But you also have Corey Coleman, who's coming off an ACL tear. So that will be something to watch. But those are my grades and victories and losses in position ranking before the season for the Sears and Giants game. Next one is the Chicago game week two in Chicago, the quarterback position. The quarterback position, I'm going to take the Bears here. Now, I know they traded for Nick Foles. He has a huge contract. And then you got Mitch Trubisky, who's going to compete with him. And a lot of people say Nick Foles is going to be the starter. Well, he could be the starter because of his contract and because he probably will be a better quarterback. Now, you got Daniel Jones, obviously, on the other side. So... Right here, I'm going to say that the better QB core goes to the Bears. Not because Foles oh, won Super Bowl. Yeah, I get that because, oh, well, is his magic only worth it in Philly? Yeah, we get that. But Foles is a solid backup, and he's a solid starter when he is on the field, and he's healthy, and he's working with the right people. But Daniel Jones hasn't progressed to that point yet. And Colt McCoy, I'd probably say is less valuable than Mitchell Trubisky as a backup because he knows his system more and Colt McCoy is coming in as a first-year backup. For the running back core, I'm going to take the Giants here. Now, a lot of people will probably dislike this or whatnot, but I think the Giants have a better running back core. Saquon Barkley, obviously the number one running back. And I give a lot of respect to Tariq Cohen. I think he's very underrated at the running back position, especially when you're talking about the NFL and you got David Montgomery behind him from last year's draft. I just don't think that Montgomery has got there yet to be a running back duo, something like New England or something like the Eagles if they had two healthy running backs. But here I'm going to give the running back position to the New York Giants. Wide receivers, I'll go with the Giants here. Allen Robinson, he's a good wide receiver and probably is more valuable than Tate, especially at Tate's age because Robinson has speed. But Tate still can do it, but I take Robinson right now, and Robinson is still in his prime. But behind him, you have a lot of questions. Anthony Miller is productive, but Ted Ginn is aging and coming out of his prime, and that's why the Saints did not rescue him last season, and that's why they didn't bring him back. And they also had Michael Thomas and Traquan Smith to cater around. But anyway, Ginn is 35, Tate is 31. So that's something to consider. But right now, the Giants have a younger receiver core that's proven. So Shepard, Tate, and Slayton win this one over Robinson, Miller, and Ted Ginn. For the tight end position, I will definitely take the Giants here. Obviously, Caden Smith, as I said, he's unproven, but has some production. And Evan Ingram, he's productive when he stays on the field. But that's better compared to Jimmy Graham and Adam Shaheen. Jimmy Graham in Green Bay was... Not priceless, he was worthless because of his production or they couldn't get him involved. He's coming out of his prime. I don't trust him. I know they drafted another tight end. That's Cole Komet out of Notre Dame. They also have Demetrius Harris competing for one of the backup roles at the tight end position. But right now, I'm going to base it off of what I see here. And I see the Giants having a better tight end core because even though Ingram is injury prone, he's productive and extremely productive once you get him involved in on the field. And Caden Smith could be that guy too. But Jimmy Graham, could he come back and possibly show the Packers, oh, you released me and I'm going to be good against you now. So could that happen? We'll see. But Jimmy Graham right now is not looking too good at tight end. The offensive line, I probably would take the Chicago Bears just by a little bit because... Charles Leno is a good tackle, as well as Bobby Massey and Cody Whitehair is a good interior guard. As I mentioned, Kevin Zeitler is a key underrated player for the Giants, but Nate Solder hasn't figured it out at the tackle position last year especially. 
for the Giants, and Will Hernandez is still developing, and we don't know who's going to play center. I'm going to give the Bears the victory there. The defensive line, I will take the Chicago Bears. Akeem Hicks and Eddie Goldman are two interior linemen that could definitely pressure the quarterback. Again, you could say scheme or whatnot, but those guys are definitely proven to get to the quarterback, and Dexter Lawrence and Dalvin Tomlinson have to find their way in that interior. And I know Leonard Williams also is an underrated piece, as I mentioned, but I still think that Chicago has their interior line, and that helps their secondary because they also have Khalil Mack and the other guys at the pass rushing core, but they also have that interior so they don't step up in the pocket and they get to the quarterback easier to help out that secondary. Now for the linebacking core, inside and outside, Khalil Mack, Danny Trevathan, Robert Quinn, that is way more established than the Giants have right now. So I'm going to take the Bears on that one for the cornerback position. Kyle Fuller, Buster Screen, and Artie Burns. Artie Burns was really subpar in Pittsburgh. Buster Screen was sort of that way in New York for the Jets. But I would prefer them right now over the Giants secondary other than James Bradbury because, again, the Giants secondary is really not that proven. But these guys are veterans, and I'd probably trust them over Baker, Ballantyne, and Beal for right now. For the safety position, I'd probably take the Bears because even though they have Tashawn Gibson, the aging safety, at strong safety, Eddie Jackson is one of the best safeties in the league and probably one of the most underrated coming off of last year because the Bears didn't make the playoffs. But Eddie Jackson is still one of the best safeties in this league. And I would prefer his talent over Jabril Peppers, Julian Love for right now. So the safeties goes to Chicago. Special teams, I'd probably take the Chicago Bears. Pat O'Donnell is a good competition towards Riley Dixon. i definitely take Rosas over Eddie Pinheiro. And also, I would take Cordell Patterson over any returner that the Giants have at this moment. So, special teams goes to Chicago and going on to Week 3. Now, for this one, for the San Francisco 49ers coming to MetLife to face the Giants, I'm going to run through this quickly because a lot of you guys assume that the 49ers are definitely better than Giants, and so do I. So, quarterback Garoppolo is better than Jones, definitely. For the running back position... Barkley is better than Coleman, Mostert, and McKinnon, but I just think their three or two running back duo, however they use it, is definitely better than Barkley and Deion Lewis, who's aging a little bit, but still can be used. Wide receivers, I would definitely take the wide receiving core of the Giants with Slayton Tate and Sterling Shepard over Debo Samuel and Travis Benjamin. But there's also an unproven Jalen Hurd from last year and then Brandon Ayuk this year. For the tight end position, George Kittle definitely is better than Evan Ingram. And they have a good backup in Ross Dwelly. For the offensive line, not much to say. Trent Williams came over from the Washington Redskins. Mike McGlinchey, the right tackle, a couple years ago drafted out of Notre Dame. Former Giants center Weston Richburg. And also the solid guard from the Detroit Lions a couple years ago. Lake and Tomlinson. Defensive line, as I explained earlier, they have a lot of speedier guys at the defensive interior and the defensive end spot. Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw is unproven, but he was a first round draft pick out of South Carolina. Nick Bosa, one of the Bosa brothers, and defensive tackle DJ Jones. At linebacker, they definitely have it better. Fred Warner, Drake Greenlaw, Quan Alexander, and D Ford. Cornerback position, they have it better too. Richard Sherman, and Akella Witherspoon. Witherspoon hasn't been himself since his rookie year, but I'd take him over DeAndre Baker, Sam Beal, Corey Ballantyne. Again, that's with progression. Right now, he looks better than those three Giants corners. Safety, Jimmy Ward and Jaquiski Tart have more talent and have more playmaking ability than the Giants have on the roster, or at least the safety position right now. I know Jabril Peppers is a contributor, but again, we still have to wait with Julian Love and Xavier McKinney. So, and they make a better impact on that defense than does Jabril Peppers on the Giants defense because he basically would carry in playmaking last year. But we're moving to 2020. So for the safety position, San Francisco again. And then for special teams, I would probably say 
the 49ers. Wisniewski seems to be a good punter. They drafted him last year. And Robbie Gould, the legend kicker, one of the most accurate in NFL history. He's better than Rosas right now and all time. Now moving to week four in L.A. versus the Rams. The Rams take the quarterback position because Jared Goff is better than Daniel Jones at the moment. For the running back position, they have a lot of running backs, just not number ones. They have Cam Akers, who they drafted this year. They also have John Kelly, Malcolm Brown, and Daryl Henderson as the backup running backs. But I think Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis are better than them. Wide receivers, definitely I'd take the L.A. Rams right now. They drafted Van Jefferson, which you could consider in the later parts, but Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are definitely playmakers on the offense and some of Jared Goff's favorite targets for the tight end position. I would take the Giants here. Evan Ingram, Gerald Everett, and Tyler Higby are some names to keep in mind when you're discussing or debating that position, but I would take the Giants here. Gerald Everett, I believe, is underutilized as well as Higby is as compared to the wide receivers, but I would definitely take the Giants tight end core at this moment. For the offensive line, people could debate it. The people behind the scenes who were actually helping me create this list in comparison, especially my brother, he told me, okay, the Rams offensive line is better when you compare the tackles and the center. Personally, I think that the Giants have a better offensive line. Nate Solder, compared to Andrew Whitworth, is not even really much close because Whitworth is a pro bowler and is still solid at his age while Solder is slowly falling apart you don't know who's playing right tackle for the Giants probably going to be Thomas as I mentioned or he'll play left tackle but Havenstein is better on the right side Kevin Zeitler solid guard for the Giants again but I would definitely take the Giants here because a lot of collapsing happened with the offensive line last year for the Rams because the lack of depth they had I know the Giants have a lack of depth or have had a lot of lack of depth in the past when it came to the offensive line, but I think it's better now. But I think the offensive line needs to be fixed up for the Rams, but right now I definitely take the Giants offensive line. For the Rams defensive line, this isn't really much of an argument because Michael Brockers and Aaron Donald are better than Tomlinson Lawrence and Leonard Williams saw about stopping the run and pushing the pocket from the interior from the linebacker position. Key players Micah Kaiser and Samson Abukam and also Leonard Floyd are better than what the Giants have at inside and outside linebacker, including Blake Martinez, but also something to note at inside linebacker for the Rams. They lost Corey Littleton this offseason, but I would still take the Rams in the inside and outside positions. Maybe not inside, but outside linebacker, I would definitely take them. For cornerbacks, I don't think it's much of a question to ask anyway. Jalen Ramsey, he's still in his prime, and I would take him over Bradbury and much of the Giants secondary anyway. For the safety position, John Johnson is probably one of the key safeties there as Taylor Rapp, but right there, I'm probably going to go with the Giants secondary or at least the safety position because I believe Jabril Peppers has more playmaking abilities than Taylor Rapp does, even though also John Johnson is a good safety, but for the special teams... I would probably take the LA Rams, even though Greg Zerline is not there anymore. He's also in Dallas now, which is our next team. Johnny Hecker is probably one of the best punters in the league. Probably one of the best pinner inside the 20s. Even though the Giants have a good return game, I would still probably prefer the Rams just by a smidge. And their kicker is Austin McGannis. I think they drafted him, or he's an undrafted free agent. But we'll see about that during the season. Week 5 against Dallas. The quarterback position is better, and so is backup quarterback position is better. For the Dallas Cowboys, they have Prescott starting. And even if he decides to sit out the season for some sort of reason, whether it be no discussion on a long-term deal or possibly the franchise tag, Andy Dalton's behind him, and I believe he's better than Daniel Jones at this point. Running backs, everyone likes to make the argument. Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, but Saquon's better than Ezekiel Elliott, in my opinion, my honest opinion. He has a lot of... Ability to spin around and find yards. And it's also harder for Saquon because he doesn't have an offensive line like the Cowboys do where they just block for Elliott and he runs up the middle. And also, I believe Deion Lewis is better running back than Tony Pollard. Pollard showed some stuff last season, but I still believe Deion Lewis is better. So the running back 
room goes to the Giants, and the wide receiver room will go to the Giants. Now, Slayton, Tate, and Shepard compared to C.D. Lamb, Cooper, and Gallup. Lamb still has a lot to prove, even though he was drafted in the first round. Mari Cooper, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, and he still maintains that he signed an extension deal this offseason. Michael Gallup is sort of that wide receiver two or three guy, but I don't think he's much to talk about unless he beats the Giants secondary, beats the best secondary, but I don't think Gallup is much to talk about. I think he's a bit overhyped when it comes to wide receiver court. Tight ends, I would definitely take the Giants here. Evan Ingram and Caden Smith, I would definitely take them over Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz. Schultz I don't know much about, and Caden Smith still has a lot to prove, but I would honestly still take Evan Ingram over Blake Jarwin because Ingram has wide receiver ability and is a perfect mismatch for linebackers. For the offensive line, not much to say here. Zach Martin, Lyle Collins, and Tyron Smith head that offensive line and the good core of the offensive line. They still have to put a center there. It's either going to be Joe Looney or Tyler Biedez, the rookie out of Wisconsin. But those three are established veterans and good veterans and made probably one or two Pro Bowls in their career. And if they haven't already, they will in the future. So they are definitely better than the Giants offensive line right now, even though their coach was Mark Colombo. And Mark Colombo is now a Giant offensive line coach. Now, if the defensive line, Gerald McCoy, Demarcus Lawrence, Dontari Poe, and Alden Smith. Alden Smith still has some stuff to prove after he was out of the league for a couple of years. But Gerald McCoy, Dontari Poe definitely beef up the interior while Demarcus Lawrence is on the outside rushing the passer and forcing the tackles to go back towards the quarterback. For the linebacking core, I don't think it's really close here. Van Der Esch, the third-year man out of Boise State, also the veteran Sean Lee, still can make some plays, and Jalen Smith, who signed an extension last offseason. The cornerbacks, it's tough, but to be honest, I would probably take the Cowboys here because Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown are good reserve cornerbacks. While you have Shidobe Awuzie taking over at the 1 for Byron Jones who was signed to the Miami Dolphins this offseason. But I would probably take him over the Giants cornerback position. But to be honest with you, I'd take James Bradbury over those three corners. Meaning Awuzie, Anthony Brown, and Jordan Lewis. For safeties, HaHa Clinton Dix can still make plays, and he signed to the Dallas Cowboys this offseason. Xavier Woods can also do that as well. I think it's more proven talent for the Dallas Cowboys, so I'm going to give it to them, even though Jabril Peppers still has a spot in my mind. Special teams, Greg Zerline, I would probably say is a key factor for the kicking position, and I think he's going to win the kicking competition in the preseason against Kai Forbath. For the Dallas Cowboys, but I think the New York Giants are definitely better on special teams with returners and gunners and also the punting game because Chris Jones had some of the worst stats in the NFL last year. If you take a look at his stats, we're near dead last in the league, especially when it came to yards per punt. Next week six and also week nine for the Giants and the Redskins. Also, going back to the Dallas one, that's also going to be for Week 17, so I don't need to do that one again, but that's just going to be for when Week 17 happens as well. But for the quarterback position, Daniel Jones, definitely. I think he's better than Haskins, and the Giants have a good backup with Colt McCoy. Running back position, definitely. Saquon Barkley and Dion Lewis, they do have Adrian Peterson, but I would still take Saquon Barkley right now and Adrian Peterson still can run the football but I would definitely take Saquon Barkley as I said with the wide receivers they don't have much at wide receiver Kelvin Harmon and Terry McLaurin are the only recognizable names they did draft Anthony Gandy Golden but he's in my opinion unproven and not too much to get excited about yet I could be wrong though but I would take Slayton Shepard and Tate tight end position they do have Jeremy Sprinkle and today is Moss, but I'd still take Evan Ingram and Caden Smith as tight ends. Washington, their O-line, another argument I had with my brother about this because he was in charge of making this list. He says that Washington's O-line is better. I think that the Giants' O-line is better. They do 
both have stud right guards in Kevin Zeitler and Brandon Sheriff. Obviously, Zeitler isn't really near the Brandon Sheriff line because Sheriff has made multiple Pro Bowls. But I definitely think there's going to be a hole at left tackle, especially with the departure of Trent Williams. Wes Martin is going to need to be consistent starter, and I think Morgan Moses is slowly coming out of his prime as a right tackle. So I definitely think that the Giants could definitely do better with their offensive line than Washington can do with their offensive line and their offense as a whole because they don't have really much weapons. But when it comes to the defense, that's a different story. Washington has a better defensive line with Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, and Jonathan Allen. Also, insert Chase Young on the edge, especially in a Jack Del Rio defense. With the linebacking core, Thomas Davis, he still can play somewhat football. Cole Holcomb, and also, I forgot to mention, Kerrigan will probably be moving to defensive end instead of outside linebackers. They are converting to a 4-3 scheme. Cornerback for Washington, I would definitely take Washington because Ronald Darby and Kendall Fuller say it all, especially Kendall Fuller in the season he did have last year, and he's coming back to the team that drafted him. For safeties, I'd take Jabril Peppers and Julian Love over Landon Collins and Sean Davis. Even though Collins is a playmaker in the box and in the run game, he can't cover. Giants know that best. For special teams, Dustin Hopkins is a good kicker. Tressway is also one of the most underrated punters, if he is underrated, but I do think he's a good punter. The Giants do have some good return men and better return men than Washington, but special teams will go to Washington in that case, even though the Giants have one of the best special teams in football right now. Week 7 and also Week 10 with versing Philly. For the quarterback position, Wentz is still more dominant than Daniel Jones is at his stage in his career. For the running backs, they do have one good running back in Miles Sanders, but I don't think Scott and Clement are much to talk about in the behind him, but it is worth noting that Boston Scott absolutely destroyed the Giants defense last year on Monday Night Football, but Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis are better. With the wide receiver position, you could name all of them you want. Jalen Rigor, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, John Hightower, Marquise Goodwin, and also the number one wide receiver, Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah, you could name them, but nothing much is productive there and I really think that they are one of the lowest wide receiver spots in the league when they get an actual wide receiver or when Jalen Rigor proves it or whoever else they pick up proves to flatten out that wide receiver court and make them play again then I will say the Eagles but for right now I think the Giants have a better wide receiver core the tight end position Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard say it all Ertz one of the best tight ends in this league probably behind Travis Kelsey and the other greats. Dallas Goddard is a solid two tight end, and I would take them over Ingram and Smith. Offensive line, worth noting that Brandon Brooks is out for the 2020 season, but Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson are probably one of the best linemen in the league. Kelsey, one of the best centers and has been for a while. Lane Johnson, one of the best right tackles in the game, so I'll give it to them. For the defensive line, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Malik Jackson, Javon Hargrave on the interior pushing the pocket. So that goes to them, and they can rush the passer, definitely. Fletcher Cox showed it in multiple games against the Giants and Brandon Graham as well. Javon Hargrave coming over from the Steelers, so he's going to make an immediate impact to this defense. For the linebacking core, it's really empty for this team. I mean, you did draft Davion Taylor and a couple other guys you got, but... It's really not much talented in the linebacker room. So I'm going to take the Giants there. I would probably take Lorenzo Carter and O'Shane Ziminis and Blake Martinez over the linebackers that Philly has. For the cornerback position, this shouldn't be much of a say, but the Philly Eagles have a better cornerback room. Darius Slay they acquired in the offseason. Jalen Mills still there and still solid. Nikhil Roby Coleman from the LA Rams coming in as the slot corner, and he's going to improve that position as well. So it's really exciting to see for this team. So, But I'm definitely sticking to the Eagles here, especially when it comes to that. For the safety position, I'm going to take the New York Giants here. Rodney McLeod and Kevon Wallace, the draft pick out of Clemson. They're going to be the safety duo this year. 
But it's going to be a big loss without Malcolm Jenkins. And he went to the Saints this year. Obviously, everyone knows the controversy that happened. I'm not going to get into that because that's not what we're talking about here. But I would definitely take Julian Love and Jabril Peppers over an unproven Kevon Wallace and Ronnie McLeod. Special teams, I'd probably take the kicker Jake Elliott. And Cameron Johnston is an average punter in this league. But I'm going to stick to Philly when it comes to that sort of special teams. Even though the Giants have one of the best special teams when it comes to gunning and kickoffs and everything else. Quarterbacks for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is week 8. It's easy. Tom Brady and the Bucks get this one. For the running backs, they don't have much of a running back room. And they don't really have a dominant running back. But a lot of teams say... Oh, if you don't have a dominant running back, you know, you get to win the Super Bowl or at least get more of a shot because past teams have done that. Well, that's a point to be proven, but we'll see with this year and the hype for the Tampa Bay Bucks. But Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis definitely are better than the running back core for the Buccaneers. For the wide receivers, Tampa Bay gets this one. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin definitely out to Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton hasn't really become a threat yet that you game plan against. Mike Evans has been, and Chris Godwin is slowly going into that. Tampa Bay's tight ends, definitely a lot to look out for. All three are very productive, especially for the first one, Rob Gronkowski coming back, O.J. Howard and Cameron Brait behind him. Definitely I would take him over Ingram, Caden Smith, and Levine Toilolo. For the offensive line, Donovan Smith, he's okay as a left tackle, but I would still take the Giants here, Kevin Zeitler, they did draft Tristan Wirfs to fill the right tackle void after DeMar Dotson was not re-signed. But both teams are good at guard. Just the tackle position is a little weak for them. So we'll see how that goes. But right now, I still believe the Giants are the better team with the offensive line. Defensive line, Tampa Bay, Namakan Sue, Vita Vea, and others like that. Also, William Golston to encounter is this as well. And I think they could definitely push the pocket against opposing teams. And that's definitely something that people have to game plan against. Especially if their secondary shores up, which is going to be another position. But defensive line goes to Tampa Bay. Linebacking course, Shaq Barrett, Levante David, Jason Pierre-Paul is going to be at outside linebacker again. And Devin White as well if he progresses. So definitely I would take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers there. Cornerbacks, Carlton Davis and Jamal Dean are the only names that really pop into your head. But I would definitely take James Bradbury and the Giants secondary in that case. Safeties, Julian Love and Jabril Peppers are definitely better than an unproven Jordan Whitehead and Antoine Winfield Jr. And special teams, I'd probably take the Giants in this one. Brad Opinion is a good punter, but I don't think Matt Gay is that good of a kicker. I think Rosas is better, and the Giants have a better return game. So going now to Week 12 against Cincinnati. The Giants in Cincinnati. In Cincinnati this year, quarterbacks... I think Daniel Jones is better than Joe Burrow. A lot of people in the media will probably think Joe Burrow is better because all oh, number one overall pick, but we'll see where that hype goes. For the running back position, I disagree here with my brother and my friend Sean on this one because they helped me obviously conform this. Joe Mixon is one of the most underrated running backs because of the offensive production of the team he's on and the offensive line. And Giovanni Bernard is a solid backup, but I would definitely take Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis over the both of them because Saquon's better than both of them. But Deion Lewis still provides a solid backup, and I think he's better than Giovanni Bernard. But I'm still taking the Giants on this one. Wide receiver core, Darius Slayton, Golden Tate, and Sterling Shepard. I think they're better than the wide receiving core of the Cincinnati Bengals. Tyler Boyd is another name to keep in mind along with A.J. Green. They also drafted T. Higgins, but Higgins is unproven. Tyler Boyd is a solid wide receiver and most likely could be a number one if A.J. Green is not a long-term option with his injuries. And that's why I picked a wide receiver for the Giants crew because A.J. Green is injury prone and I always keep that in mind. For the tight end position, they really didn't replace Tyler Eifert that well. So Evan Ingram and Caden Smith win this one over Drew Sample and Mason Shrek. For the offensive line, I would definitely take the Giants in this one. I think the Giants are definitely better at tackle. Everyone could say, oh, Jonah Williams, you know, second-year man out of Alabama. Right, but he never played an NFL snap and never faced an NFL rusher. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, Bobby Hart's at right tackle. Everyone remembers him if you're a Giants fan. So definitely the offensive line I take. 
with the defensive line, Dunlap, Reader, signed from the Texans. Geno Atkins is still in his prime and still can push the pocket, so I'll take the defensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals here. For the linebacking core, I honestly would pick the Giants, and I would go against my brother's wishes here because I think Blake Martinez is a proven linebacker. Look, I know he's had his struggles, especially in the passing game, but the run game is better, and he's a proven linebacker compared to Jermaine Pratt, Josh Bynes, and the other guys they drafted. I think that room is similar to the Eagles, but I think they have more proven players than the Eagles. For the cornerbacks, they did make some improvements. They still have William Jackson. They also signed Trey Waynes and Mackenzie Alexander. Bradbury is better than Waynes and Alexander, but I don't think he's better than Jackson. And the Giants' rookie secondary, or second-year secondary, I should say, is not really up to the point where Alexander and Waynes are at. For the safety position, Jesse Bates is definitely a good undrafty from 2018 who can make an impact on a defense. Not as much as Drew Peppers, though, or Julian Love if he grows into one, but I'm definitely taking the giant safeties here. For special teams, Kevin Huber is a veteran punter, and they also have Alex Erickson at returner, and he's very underrated. They also got Randy Bullock as the kicker, the veteran kicker. And I think he's one of the most underrated kickers in the league just because he's on a bad team. Next to the Week 13 Seattle game. Not much of an argument here. Wilson is better than Jones. So Seattle wins the quarterback spot. For the running back spot, I know people will say, oh, Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde and also Rashad Penny as well. I think Saquon Barkley is better than Carson and that running back core and I also think Deion Lewis is better than Rashad Penny and Carlos Hyde, possibly, if you can make that argument. But I think Carson is still better than Deion Lewis at this point, but I'm still taking the Giants running back core at this point. For the wide receiver core, they definitely have lightning there. It's debatable in some cases, but DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Dorsett, you definitely have to plan against DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett is a speedy return man, but he's also a speedy slot guy. Dorsett is a depth piece, but he's also a solid wide receiver for the tight end position. Olsen is injury prone. Wilson's a solid tight end, as as is Will Disley. But I'm still taking the playmaking abilities of Evan Ingram and also what could be Caden Smith. For the offensive line, I would definitely take the Giants offensive line because they did sign Brandon Shell in the offseason with the Seahawks, but... I don't think he was much to talk about with the Jets. I don't think he's much to talk about with the Seahawks. But Dwayne Brown is definitely something to talk about as a left tackle. He could still do it. Mike Upati is a solid guard, but I still take the Giants and Kevin Zeitler and Nate Solder over what the Seahawks offensive line has become. They also drafted Damian Lewis out of LSU to keep that in mind. For the defensive line, I'd probably take the New York Giants, even though they still have Jerron Reed. They don't really have many defensive interior or defensive end pieces that can rush the passer. They did select Alton Robinson out of Syracuse, but I think the Giants have a better defensive line when it comes to pushing the pocket and stopping the run. For the linebacking core, KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner say it all, so Seattle wins that argument. For the cornerbacks, Trey Flowers and Quinton Dunbar, pending punishment for Dunbar, obviously, but I definitely think that Bradbury is better than Dunbar, but Dunbar beats the rest of the Giants' secondary, as does Trey Flowers. For the safety position, Quandre Diggs is the only recognizable name, but I would definitely still take Jabril Peppers and Julian Love there. For special teams, Michael Dixon is a hell of a punter, and Jason Myers, I think he's still a solid kicker despite a down year last year. I would definitely take him over Aldrick Rosas, though. So week 14 now with the Cardinals against the Giants. Arizona, I'd take Kyler Murray, honestly, at the quarterback position for the running backs. They do have Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds, but Chase Edmonds won game against the Giants, and it was a horrible defense. So I'm not saying Edmonds doesn't have talent, but I would definitely take Saquon Barkley on Deion Lewis. Wide receiver, they still have Larry Fitzgerald working it. They also traded for DeAndre Hopkins and have Christian Kirk, so I'll take Arizona there. Tight ends, I would take... Evan Ingram and Caden Smith over Max Williams and whoever the hell they have at the rest of the position. For the offensive line, I'd take the Giants just by a smidge. Marcus Gilbert is going to be coming off a season-ending 
injury. So that's going to be interesting. Watch DJ Humphreys was signed to a three-year extension. They also still have Justin Pugh at left guard, the former Giant. But I would take the Giants offensive line here, Will Hernandez. It's debatable if he's better than Pugh, but I think Pugh is solid at this point. And I believe Kevin Zeitler is better than the veteran J.R. Sweezy. For the defensive line or the defensive interiors, however you want to call it, I think that the Giants are better there. They did draft Leaky Fotu or whatever his name is at the interior. They also still have Corey Peters at the defensive tackle position, but I think the Giants are better at pushing the pocket. With the linebacking core, Chandler Jones still on the outside. He's in his 30s and still rushing the passer like hell, still giving tackles hell. Middle linebacker Jordan Hicks and Devondre Campbell as well. Also, Isaiah Simmons, to note, the rookie out of Clemson. For the cornerback position, Byron Murphy and Patrick Peterson, I take them over the Giants secondary, meaning at the cornerback position. For the safety position, I would take Julian Love and Jabril Peppers over Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. And for special teams, I would take Arizona. Andy Lee is an underrated punter, and Zane Gonzalez had a bounce back year last year. Going to the Cleveland Week, that's Cleveland at NYG, Week 15. Cleveland has the better quarterbacks. Keenum, the backup, Mayfield, the starter. PFF wants to probably degrade this if they even saw it. And they don't watch my podcast, but I don't care anyway. But I would still take the Giants running back duo over the duo for the Cleveland Browns with Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. I know Chubb had a 1,000-yard season last year, but Hunt is still... Not entirely fresh, especially after 2018 when he got ousted from the league and wasn't brought back till a later point in 2019. Wide receiver core, obviously, OBJ and Landry over the Giants wide receiver core. A lot more firepower there. For the tight ends, I would honestly take Austin Hooper and David Njoku over over Evan Ingram and Caden Smith. For the offensive line, I would take the New York Giants, even though they have J.C. Treader at center. They did draft Jedrick Wills for the right side and probably going to put Conklin at the left side. But I do think the Giants are stronger at guard. And the tackle, or at least the right tackle position, is unidentifiable for the future for both teams. But I would still take the Giants offensive line and that coaching rather than the offensive line for the Cleveland Browns. For the defensive line, I take the Cleveland Browns. Larry Ogunjobi, Sheldon Richardson, Olivier Vernon, and Miles Garrett over what we have right now, even though they have a different scheme where Vernon is defensive end instead of an outside linebacker. For linebacking core, there's not much to talk about there, so the Giants win this one. I think Blake Martinez is better than Ty Davis, Mac Wilson, and B.J. Goodson, the former Giant. For the cornerback position, I would take Greedy Williams and Denzel Ward over the New York Giants cornerback core. I still think that Bradbury is slightly better than Ward, even though that Ward had a drop-off season last year and Greedy Williams did have his rookie struggles. But I'd still take Greedy Williams over the Giants secondary. For the safety position, I would take the Giants right now, proven-wise. They did draft Grant Delpit, and they also have Andrew Sandejo, and they got Carl Joseph. But I would still take the Giants and Julian Love and Jabril Peppers. And for special teams... Gillen, I don't know much about him in Cybert. I would still prefer Rosas over him. So the special teams goes to the Giants. And here's the final team, the Baltimore Ravens, Week 16. Not much to talk about here in much positions because the Ravens are one of the best teams in the league. QB, Lamar Jackson, obviously goes to Baltimore. Running back position, Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram and the way they're utilized over Saquon Barkley and Deion Lewis. Wide receiving core, Marquise Brown and Willie Sneed over the production that the Giants wide receiver core has. For the tight ends, Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle over Evan Ingram and Caden Smith. The offensive line, not much to explain there. Matt Skura, Orlando Brown, and Ronnie Stanley are better offensive linemen than what the Giants have right now for the defensive line. Derek Wolf, Brandon Williams, Clias Campbell, those are guys that can collapse the pocket. Linebacking core is debatable because of the pass rush, but I would take Matt Judon, Pernell McAfee, and Jake Ryan over what the Giants have there right now. Proven-wise, I know Blake Martinez is proven, and O'Shane Zimenez could have hype coming next season, but we'll see what happens right now. Baltimore's better at that spot. Cornerback position, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, and Jimmy Smith are better than the Giants' secondary, probably one of the best secondaries in the NFL. Earl Thomas, 
Still one of the best safeties in the NFL. I would take his firepower over Jabril Peppers and Julian Love. And finally, for the special teams, I would take Baltimore Sam Koch over Riley Dixon. And I would take Justin Tucker as one of the most accurate NFL kickers in history over Alder Prosas. So that is finally the end of this episode of the Bleeding Big Blue Podcast, episode 25. Thank you guys for listening in. I know this was a long one, but definitely it was worth hearing it and hearing my thoughts on the position battles for the upcoming season. It's definitely something to look forward to. This could always change, but for right now, that's how I see them. Thank you guys for supporting. Follow our social media pages for updates. We have a Discord server. That link is in the link tree in the Instagram and Twitter. Also, this will be posted on YouTube, but podcasts are hosted on Podbean, but available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Thank you guys for supporting. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we will see you on Thursday with Curtis Grant and the Madden stream for the Cincinnati Bengals.